We are going to be um, following a, a demonstration of uh, e delivery AS4 message exchange between two access points based in uh, Domibus, which is the software um, created here in the, in the Commission as a sample access point. Um, the demo will uh, go through the following points. We will uh, explain uh, briefly what is the four corner model, which uh, Bogdan has already explained uh, very well. Uh, we will uh, define um, the characteristics of this uh, scenario. As you know, there are multiple uh, ways of uh, setting up an e-delivery network. So the demo scenario will be based on a specific configuration. We will go through the, um, the access point configuration uh, what is the P mode configuration, the Domibus properties, uh, which defines uh, how the access point will behave and uh, will operate. Then uh, we will move on to, to the message uh, life cycle. Uh, what happens when we send or receive a, a message, an AS4 message. And um, the Domibus release page, so where you can find uh, information on where to obtain uh, Domibus. So what is the four corner model? Um, Bogdan already explained uh, very well, but this is important to go through again because uh, we will be using these terms very much during the demo. So we will have a corner one, two, three, and four, but as we will refer to them as C1, C2, C3, and C4, where C1 will be the original sender, the person or entity that needs to, to send a message, uh, a package to, to a third party, which would be C4. Uh, C2 and C3 will be the two access points, or as uh, Bogdan mentioned, uh, we can imagine as the, the post offices, where we will deliver the package and we we'll go through the other uh, access point. Um, in the four corner model, um, the backends, uh, systems of the user don't exchange data directly with uh, with each other. Uh, this is a, a part of the, the architecture. So the original sender does not send a message uh, directly to the final recipient. So the message is routed through the access points, C2 and C3. That's why we call this the four corner model. The access points need to be conformant to the same set of specifications. They have to speak the same language, so to speak. And the uh, delivery specifications is what define uh, this language that is going to be used uh, during the message exchange. Um, so as a result, uh, there is a wide uh, range of uh, access points available and uh, IT systems and IT operators can uh, use uh, one or another independently. So the demo scenario will be, uh, we will be using, uh, of course, the four corner model topology. The protocol for the exchange will be the e-delivery AS4 profile, which is the, the default used in Domibus. Uh, the integration approach, uh, the, the backend that we see here, this connector, we will be using the, the web service plugin. It's one of the, the three plugins that uh, come by default with Domibus. If we have enough time, uh, we will also showcase the file system plugin. And in the security layer, we will uh, be using a mutual trust, meaning that uh, both access points need to trust each other in advance. Uh, so it's going to be based on um, a static discovery. And the security control uh, will be based in the inner security of the connector. So there is a, um, there is a authentication and a security between uh, C1 and C2 through the connector. Uh, the demo in detail, um, we will be sending a message from the party A. We, will, we have called this party name uh, 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 Domibus Blue. Um, and uh, it, we will send a message through the web service plugin. The web service plugin, uh, it will uh, return uh, the message ID that it has created. And then the message will be sent to the corner three and uh, it will be available for final recipient corner four to, to retrieve. The components in the demo, uh, we will be using a SOAP UI acting as a client as C1 and C4. SOAP UI is a, 
industry standard uh, tool for, for testing uh, SOAP and uh, REST APIs. Uh, the web service plugin is based in, in SOAP services. So this is a very common tool to, to be used um, during this, um, this kind of uh, testings. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Domibus is sample implementation. It's an open source project of an AS4 access point. It is maintained by the European Commission. It is a valid uh, product to be used in a production environment. Even though we call it a sample implementation, it has uh, production capabilities. It can work in a real production environment. And um, in a normal uh, network, the users of the implementation of Domibus, in this case, they are fully responsible for its integration with their backend systems, deployment and operations. Uh, E-delivery, like um, Bogdan explained, only uh, focuses on the transmission between C2 and C3. So integration between C2 and C1 or C3 and C4, it's uh, up to the, the, the users uh, which choose this, this solution. Domibus offers, as I mentioned earlier, uh, briefly uh, three uh, standard connectors by default, which are the web service plugin. Uh, this provides a web service interfaces via uh, with SOAP uh, services uh, for C1 to C2 to send the messages and uh, C3 to C4, C4 to C3 to, to download the message. There is also a JMS uh, plugin, which provides a uh, queue interfaces for interoperability between C1 and C2 or C4 and C3. And finally, the FS plugin of file system plugin, which provides a file system based interface, which basically you, you drop a file in a, in a folder and uh, Domibus will pick this message and, and transmit it to the, to the final recipient. Uh, alternatively, uh, Domibus offers a um, an, uh, development API where you can choose and to develop your own custom plugin. Um, in this demo, we will be using the, the web service plugin. And if we have the time, uh, we will go through the FS plugin as well. Um, the steps in the demo, we will be going through the configuration. Uh, how do we configure an access point? How would we configure Domius in this case? Um, there are two main points, uh, the P mode file, which is the P mode stands for a processing mode file. Uh, this defines how the access point uh, will, uh, will behave and uh, what is the, um, the, the set of uh, standards that are going to be used. This can be seen as a way of a contract between, uh, between two, two parties. So um, the access point A or access point B, they need to agree to certain conditions to a contract. So if uh, the message has to abide to this, uh, to this uh, contract, this, this P mode uh, configuration. Uh, we will be seeing a sample uh, P mode from, from Domibus where we will, uh, we will highlight uh, specifically the, the endpoint URL where we configure the, the, the party with uh, the, the access point name and what is the, the URL where we will uh, submit the message, the party name, party ID, and, and other uh, attributes, and uh, how to upload the PMODE to the access point to have this configuration in place. Um, the second point, which is uh, quite important in the AS4 exchange, is the security. And the security is configured uh, in the case of Domibus via the Domibus properties file. We will show uh, where we we do configure the, the key store and the trust store, which contains the public and private keys uh, for the message exchange. We will go through that in much detail later. Um, sending and receiving, uh, it's basically backend C1 sends a message to access point C2. Well, it, it doesn't really send the message, it sends a request uh, as a request to C2. C2, the access point will. Um, uh, let's say validate this request, and if the request is uh, is valid according to the the P mode, this this contract, let's say, uh, it will produce a valid AS4 message that will be ready to be sent to the recipient access point. Uh, once the message has arrived to the recipient access point, it uh, receives an acknowledgement. This is a non-repudiation receipt, 
and then uh, the message will be ready uh, in the recipient access point. So the, the final recipient can download the message uh, anytime. Okay, once the, the message is downloaded uh, from the corner three as well, uh, C4 will get uh, a response. The configuration of the P mode. P mode, as I explained earlier, is a processing mode. It's a collection of parameters that determine how user messages are exchanged between a pair of access points that take into account the quality of service transmission mode and error handling. We can configure a, a num number of uh, parameters which will, um, which will define uh, how the, the message transmission will, will happen. As, um, uh, as I said earlier, this can be um, seen as, as a way of a contract. Okay, it is a very good analogy, I think, uh, to uh, to put in, in in other words. The P mode also allows to identify what are all the access points uh, and addresses of the recipient party IDs, because in this case we are using a, a static discovery. Um, this is how it looks like the um, the, the party the party configuration. So in this case we have a a party name uh, red GW with uh, one endpoint. So the messages that we send to this party will be pushed into this uh, URL. This has to be a, a public URL, publicly accessible, or at least in the same network of the access point. So there has to be connectivity, network connectivity between them. And um, the message is uh, pushed uh, via a, a post uh, HTTP protocol to, to this uh, URL. And this would be the one for blue GW. These party names, they also have these uh, different identifiers, which we will use to, to submit or uh, receive the messages. Um, in the case of Domibus, uh, we can upload uh, this configuration directly from the administration console. We, we, we will see this later, uh, more graphically. We will uh, access the access point and via this button upload, we will be able to upload the P mode and uh, immediately it will be taken into account for the message exchange. The security details in the Domibus property file. This is also how it looks like, but we will show a, a real example. It's, it's basically the same because we are using a, a sample key store and trust store which uh, contains a sample keys for the, the demo presentation. And we will go now through the a live uh, presentation. I mean, uh, a real showcase of uh, the, the message exchange. The first step will be C1 will submit a request to C2. In this case, uh, this envelope represents the, the request. This will be a SOAP request. This request arrives to the web service plugin, the connector in the, in the Domibus, in the corner two. If the, the request is uh, correct, and it uh, complies with the, the P mode file configuration. The access point will produce a message ID, we produce an AS4 message, and it will respond the, the sender with the message ID that has been created. So it will create a, a SOAP response that will contain the, the message ID in there. Let's go through an example. I have here um, one access point called uh, Domibus Blue. And I'm going to use uh, SOAP UI here to submit a message. This will be the, the SOAP uh, envelope, what it looks like. The main parts that we can identify here is the, the party information that will contain the, the sender which is like in an email from and the, the two. So from means who is the sender. The sender will be Domibus Blue, the access point that we, we saw earlier, and the receiver will be Domibus Red. In this request, as you might have noticed, we do not see the, the endpoint URL. Um, Domibus will only use the, the party ID and uh, other identifiers like the party type and, and other attributes 
to um, validate uh, this party. And uh, only in the P mode configuration, we have the, the endpoint URL. So in here, we are saying we want to send a message from Domibus Blue to Domibus Red. We will use uh, certain services and actions that are all also defined in the P mode. And um, the message itself, it will contain uh, this data. This is just a base 64 encoded uh, XML uh, text that will be the payload uh, embedded into the message. So if I, um, if I click uh, play here, I have gotten a response back here. And this is the response that we have gotten from, from the Omnibus. Going back to the slide, this will represent this little envelope here. We have sent this request by clicking play. And uh, after the validation, successful validation, we have received something. This is what we have received that contains the message ID that has been uh, produced by Domibus. So we have uh, some sort of receipt as if we go to our post office and they give us a, a tracking number so that we know the status of our, our message. Next. This is what we will that what will happen at C2 uh, while sending the message. The, um, the message will be validated. It will be compressed using a GZIP, the open source uh, GZIP. The message will be signed with the, the pr uh, private key of the, the sender that will act as a non-repudiation uh, uh, measure for later. It will also be encrypted with the public key of the receiver so that only the receiver can decrypt this message. Um, once this has happened, uh, the party will be looked uh, up into in the P mode to see what is the access point that has to, to receive this, this message. And then the message will be sent with all these, uh, let's say, uh, layers on top, it will be sent encrypt, signed, and uh, zipped to the recipient access point. We can see here graphically how the, the message has, uh, has moved. And then um, what happens uh, at C3? First, please, let me show you uh, what we see here in our, in our access point, uh, Domibus Blue. This Domibus Blue, uh, as we saw here in the request earlier, this, this is the sender. So we are sending from Domibus Blue. So what do we see in our Domibus uh, Blue configuration? Let me log in. Here we see a message ID. This is the same message ID that we see here. Okay. If I look for it, this is it. And we see a status and uh, other information, the message ID from party ID to party ID, the message status, the, the received date, etc. The status that we see here is acknowledged. It means we have received the acknowledgement from C3 correctly, as we see here. Okay, uh, the acknowledged, this is arrow, once the message has been received. Now, what happens at the receiver access point? The receiver access point, it receives a, a message. First, it will uh, decrypt the message using its uh, own private key. It will verify the signature of the sender using uh, the public key that it, it has. It will decrypt, uh, sorry, it will decompress the, the, the message and it will uh, validate the, the user. Basically, it will look into the, its own P mode configuration that this user is a valid user that is, uh, is expected to, to send messages. And once uh, all this validation has, uh, has happened, it will send back uh, the acknowledgement to uh, C2, to the corner two. As Bogdan explained earlier, this acts as a, um, as a non-repudiation receipt, uh, meaning that uh, the receiver access point 
cannot uh, deny that it has received this message. Then the message will stay there in the corner three, waiting to be picked. As if you send anything to your post office, uh, well, there are different ways. Maybe the mailman will deliver it to your door, but in some cases you will just receive a notification. You have a message and uh, or a package and you go to the post office and, and uh, take this, this message. Okay, so this is the representation of the acknowledgement. Once all of these uh, steps have happened, the acknowledgement goes to, to C2. All this goes, this happens really, really fast. Uh, but okay, this is explained very much in detail. Basically, when you send a message, you will see immediately here the, the acknowledgement. So there is not really um, a long time that you can see all the steps, uh, but this is what happens internally. And uh, after the, the message has arrived in C3, uh, C4 will uh, download this message. But uh, first, let's go. Um, as we see here from, the, from C2, this is what we can see. Now we connect to C3. And in C3, we see the exact same uh, message ID and the status is received. So from the perspective of the receiver, it has a message that has been received. Uh, this message can be downloaded. It can also be uh, previewed from the Domus admin console, but downloading or previewing the message from here does not uh, really mean uh, that the message has been retrieved by, by the, the real recipient. So uh, again, using a SOAP UI as a, as a client, as a client uh, software, we will act now as a C4 and we will send uh, the request to C3 to download uh, this message ID. And uh, by doing this, I will also show um, some of the web services that uh, the web service plugin uh, offers. So as uh, a C3, how do we know that, uh, or a C4, how do we know what messages we have uh, received in our access point? So we have um, a web service called list pending messages. So if I uh, uh, submit a list pending message request to corner three, I will get a list of messages. I only have one, but um, later we will, we will uh, show this uh, better with multiple messages. So this is the same message that was uh, sent. So now C4 knows that there is a message waiting to be, to be picked, which is here. So the message is received, nothing else. Now uh, we want to uh, retrieve the message. So we have a web service called retrieve message. So in C3, we define here, what is the message ID that we want to retrieve? And this is the response that we get. The response is the message itself. So we see here the complete uh, SOAP envelope with all the messaging headers, the body, the payload, etc. Now, what has happened at uh, C3 that here we saw received earlier, if we refresh this, the page, now we see deleted. Okay. Uh, deleted means um, the corner uh, four, has uh, downloaded the message. And once the message has uh, been picked up by the, the final recipient, the message uh, disappears from the access point. This is normal, this is as in um, the post office, once you take the, the package from the post office, it is no more in the post office. You cannot take the message uh, twice, okay? This is slightly different here. You can uh, define a, um, what is the retention policy? So for example, messages can remain for a certain period uh, as a backup measure in the access point, but by default, uh, the messages are deleted once they have been downloaded as, as we see in, in this case. So here graphically, we see the, the request that we have sent. Okay, this will represent the request retrieve message. So C4, sends the request to retrieve the message. And corner three will dispatch the message that was received. 
to it and then uh, delete it. Okay. Um, just to showcase this in a in a more real life uh, scenario. Let's uh, send uh, a few more messages from uh, corner two to corner three. So I click uh, play again and I get another message ID here and another and another. So we have several message IDs. What happens at C3 if I list the pending messages? This, me this message that was pending earlier has already been downloaded. So it should not be here in this list. And we have three new more messages that uh, indeed we can also verify here. We have this first message as deleted because it has been consumed. And we have three new more messages received. Again, we can uh, download any of these messages. Let's, for example, pick this one. And I want to retrieve this message. I think I didn't copy it correctly. Sorry. Uh, so we have re retrieved this message and immediately we will see here that uh, this message has been deleted. Let's uh, download this one. And again, we shall see the message is deleted. Um, how is this uh, deletion configuration uh, defined? Well, it is defined here in the, in the P mode. We are going to see the, the P mode uh, exactly as it looks like in uh, this access point in C3. Here we see the, the party name that is associated to this, uh, this access point. We see the parties, the party definition here, as we saw earlier in the slides, very similarly. Let me get back to the slides. Okay, you can see here, and this is the small part where we define the parties and uh, exactly we have the same here. So this would be the endpoint URL for uh, red GW or Domibus red, and this would be for Domibus blue. They are in the same host, but just in different ports. And um, we have a section called, um, um, let me see. Yes, here, the retention policy. So, this is the parameter that defines uh, what happens once the message has been uh, downloaded. So by default, as I was saying, is zero. This means once the message is downloaded, it is uh, automatically deleted. Uh, uh, this is uh, defined in, in minutes. Uh, if the message has not been downloaded, it will be available in the access point for uh, 10 days. Let's do a, a simple uh, test. I will uh, move this to 60 minutes, one hour. And all the changes in the PMO uh, configuration, they took effect uh, immediately. So if we go back to the messages, we still have uh, one message that has been received and has not been uh, taken. So now let's see what happens once we consume this message. So uh, sorry. So now if I list the pending messages, there are no more pending messages in the access point. And indeed we can see that all these messages have been deleted, but this one has only been downloaded. It has not been deleted yet because of this change that we did in the P mode configuration. We have mentioned here, we want to keep uh, the message uh, downloaded 
for 60 minutes. So after one hour, the message will be automatically moved to deleted. Okay. Um, so if we have uh, the time, I'm not sure, Manon, if we still have time. I can uh, showcase a file system plugin. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so the file system plugin is uh, quite interesting because it uh, very much simplifies uh, operations. So in certain scenarios, it would it can be very very useful. Um, but uh, we have to do a small change in the Domibus that I will explain here. Um, the file system plugin is a connector as the web service plugin and um, Domibus uh, needs to know which connector we, it will use uh, primarily. So here in the message filter, <coughs> we can see that we have uh, these uh, plugins, backend web service and backend FS plugin. The first one is web service, but now we are going to move uh, FS plugin on the top. So we save this. The FS plugin needs to uh, have a configuration uh, about uh, physical location of a uh, physical path in a, in a server. It can be also a network location where we will uh, store the, the messages that are received in this case. So um, I have here, um, I am connected remotely to the, to the server that is hosting this, uh, this uh, the Domibus, and I'm going to send a, a, another message again from uh, corner two, again to corner three. Now corner three has uh, enabled the F file system plugin as the default plugin. So we have a new message ID here. We can see in Domibus corner two, that this message has been acknowledged already. And in corner three, we see that uh, the message has been uh, already downloaded. Why? Because uh, the plugin, uh, the plugin will, will put the, the, the message in the file system. And um, that is effectively as consuming the message. So we don't, we do not need to manually uh, do any operation to to download the message because at the moment that the message is received, it will arrive here into the in folder, and here we can see the message ID one bb something, and this contains the the metadata in the message and the message itself. We can see the contents of the message which is just a simple uh, XML that says, hello, digit all. In the same way, we can uh, send a message uh, using the file system plugin as well, instead of uh, web services. So what I will do now is um, I will configure <coughs> corner two as well to use the file system plugin. And going back to the FTP view, <coughs> this is the folder that uh, the folder structure created for the corner two. And uh, in this case, uh, we will need to put uh, any attachments of payloads in this uh, out folder. This out folder contains a metadata file, which uh, defines basically the the same structure as the as the SOAP request that we define here from the Web Service plugin. We have uh, all the attributes with the part, the from, to, the services and actions that are going to be taking, everything except the payload, because the payload will be the file that we put here. So if we look at the metadata, it looks very much like uh, the SOAP request, but like I said, without the payload section. So again, this uh, metadata contains, which is the, who is going to be the sender, who is going to be the receiver, 
what services and actions are going to be used during this exchange. So I will send, uh, let's say, uh, an image. I just need to drop the file here and uh, wait uh, a little bit. Domibus uh, uses some um, internal uh, schedulers that run every, well, it, this is uh, configurable. By default, I think it's about uh, 30 seconds. Okay, we, we can see already that something has happened. The image has uh, been renamed to something that looks very much like a message ID. And if I refresh again, this has already disappeared. It's no longer here in the out folder. If we go to the admin console of Domibus 3, C2, sorry, we can see that this uh, there is a new message ID with this date that has been uh, sent from blue to red and has been acknowledged from, from Domibus red. Going to C3, we will see that the message has been downloaded. And uh, if I go to the folder for the corner three, in the in, I can refresh. Okay, sorry, then it is this one, I think, yes. And I have the same image here, which, uh, well, <laughs> this is not uh, what I meant. We can view probably are open. It's just a, a snapshot of a web page of digit all. We can send any type of data. It's a uh, Domibus is payload agnostic as uh, Bogdan explained. Uh, for example, I will send now um, a presentation of this PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, yeah, I moved it here. Again, even though uh, we see this happening uh, really fast, um, in, under the hood, Domibus is doing uh, all these steps internally with every message created. So it's uh, compressing, the, the payload, the message, signing the compressed message with the private key of the sender, encrypting the message with the public key of the receiver, finding the access point location and, and sending it. But again, this happens uh, really fast. And uh, if we go now, this file has disappeared from the out folder. If we go to C3 in, we will see this new message ID where we have the presentation as well. So um, this is uh, in a very brief uh, way, a uh, showcase of uh, Domibus. Uh, Domibus, as uh, we explained earlier, is a free and open source uh, implementation of the e-delivery is for specifications. Um, it can be found uh, in publicly. Uh, if we go to Google, for example, and I search for Domibus, we will find it here in the first uh, result. Internet is not uh, the fastest today, but here we have the page and uh, we can download uh, directly from here, uh, Domibus uh, for a Tomcat access point, for Wi-Fi access point or for WebLogic access point. Uh, we can also download the uh, documentation, quick start guide to set up an access point uh, real quick based just on Tomcat and MySQL, uh, an administration guide with, uh, has a very much uh, in-depth uh, overview of the, the whole process of uh, setting up and administering the Domibus access point and uh, plenty more uh, documentation to, to go over. 
and um, this uh, this is uh, all.